Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be looking at the Distress Oxide Colour Forest Moss. Now this is part of my Distress Oxide Colour Combinations series on YouTube and we're going through each of the Distress Oxide colours alphabetically. Uh, we've obviously started at the A's and we're now into the F's. So there's 20 plus videos now for you to go back and watch. You can see them all in one playlist and like I say, uploaded alphabetically as well. Everything I use in the video, including the blending brushes, the clear blending mats that I use, and of course the Distress Oxides, are all available linked below. But also there's a swatch chart free for you to download on my website, that is linked below, as are the labels that you can also print off, and you'll see these on many of my ink pads and my brushes as well. So I've got them in colour and in black and white for you to print off at home and use as much as you like all free for you. So let's get into this lovely Mo Morris, Morris Foss? It's not Morris Foss, I promise you. It's Forest Moss. I was just looking at Mode Lawn there, that confused me. So we're looking at Forest Moss today. Um, this is a green, but it's very much a dark green, almost getting towards a brown. Now it's really fitting that we've got birds in the background. I hope that's okay for everybody. I've got the doors open, it's a lovely day. But actually, when we're looking at forest moss, it seems nice to have the birds in the background. So let's uh, swatch this one first of all and take a look. You can see it's kind of got a yellow tone to it. Now, when I put this onto the white cardstock, it's quite a shock because I'm going to hold this up for you against the label and it's ever so ever so different okay you really see a big difference there on the label I'm not sure why because most of the distress oxide colors are really accurate but this one in particular doesn't seem to be uh, as dark as the label says so let's clean this up and the next stage within each of these videos is to have a look at other colors that are similar in the distress oxide range and I've pulled out these greens now I'm tempted to also pull out crushed olive as well. It's a much, much different uh, ink pad label, as you can see, but I might just do a little swatch of that one also so you can see how that comes out because actually looking at this, it's not too dissimilar. So we'll put that to the side for now. I might have a look at that in a moment. But essentially when you're looking online, you're browsing in a shop and you see the, uh, the labels, you see the ink pads, you're going to be kind of judging that on your next purchase. So, because of course you can't swatch it until you get it home. And this is why I'm hoping these videos are helping some of you. So I've done the swatch, you can see it's different to the label, but let's see if there's any Distress Oxide colors that are particularly close to this one or really far apart. And this might help you with your purchasing choices. So I've got peeled paint, mowed lawn, rustic wilderness, pine needles, and frayed burlap here. Now the reason I've bought in frayed burlap, despite it being a brown, a gray brown, um, when you look at the two lids together, they're not too dissimilar. They look like they might be similar shades, just one lighter than the other. So I just thought it was good for you to see that difference uh, up close and personal. So here we go, this is the swatch of these five colors and this is the forest moss. So you can see that actually peeled paint is one of the closest and yet the labels are miles apart, okay? Then we've got Mowed Lawn here, a very, very bright green. We've got Rustic Wilderness, which is an extremely dark, well, dark green green. It really is, Rustic Wilderness is perfect for your dark, dark green. Then we've got Pine Needles, which has a hint of blue, and then we've got the Frayed Burlap, which actually isn't that different, really. Yes, it has the yellow tone underneath, um, Fred Burlap has more of a sort of orangey tone, warmer tone to it, but it's not too different when you put it in certain lights. Obviously it's not green. Fred Burlap doesn't touch the greens at all, but it's worth seeing. I'm just going to also, just on this side for you, it's a little bit impromptu, but I'm going to also swatch Crushed Olive, given that Forest Moss has come out with very much a yellow tone to it. So just grabbing my Crushed Olive uh, brush there and I'm going to just do this on the back of the others so we can see now when we put the two lids together there's no way I would think that they were anything similar but actually they're not too different you can see they've got the similar tones this one is just much much darker so the forest moss is much darker than the crushed olive 
but they are similar aren't they they're that kind of yellow going on to green sort of colors so there we go so i think all in all if you're going to find one that is really really close i'm guessing peeled paint would probably be the closest and next to that frayed burlap but really forest moss does sit on its own without anything too close now we've seen with some of the reds in earlier videos that there are often colors that are extremely similar and it might mean that you can actually make a little bit of a saving on your purchases because you don't necessarily have to get every color if your budget won't stretch right now i'm sure all of you are going to eventually want every color um, but yeah hopefully if you find that you can actually sort of buy one and and not purchase another because you've got this one that's quite similar hopefully that will help you out okay so let's go in with our first color combination and for this one i'm going to use forest moss uh, i'm going i think i'll go into peeled paint and then into tattered rose so let's just grab my peeled paint brush so as we saw before peeled paint is quite similar to forest moss just a little bit brighter so let's put some of this down now um, the forest moss is from the first swatch that we did so just going to blend into that I might need to come a bit further up with the forest moss actually now what I love about peeled paint I love the way it blends into nothing it's very easy to fade this one into white and you'll find that with some of the colors some are easier than others for some reason don't know why so let's just blend that lovely forest moss into the peeled paint let's get a little more ink on our brush I think that's dried a little bit there we go so a lovely color blend if you want something really subtle but that kind of nice dark um, neutral green that's going to be perfect now let's just give this matte a white and we're going to then go into tattered rose so tattered rose is a really nice peachy coral color it's within the pink family um, it's quite pale so it takes a little while to build the color up with this one but I'm very much looking forward to getting around to doing the video for this one because it's got a lot of potential for really fun color mixes and I do love to mix this one with green I just think it looks stunning and very sophisticated so I'm going to build this up it does take a little while because as I said it's a very pale color it's a bit like sort of your milled lavender and your weathered wood where it's really pale and it takes a while I think to get the color built up so it's really solid so just keep reapplying working in circles I am going to hopefully get round to showing you some alternative ways of applying your distress oxides also so not just with blending brushes there's lots of different ways you can be applying them so that's a fun video to look out for and I will probably pop it in uh, the playlist along with these videos too so just as you could see just picking up that tattered rose and bringing it into the green we get really get the yellow picked out there as well and that has blended absolutely beautifully isn't it what a lovely color blend that is if you want something that's quite vintage actually um, nice and vintage you could put some beautiful florals with that it would look absolutely stunning I think even just white accents white embellishments or a white sentiment on top of that will stand out beautifully so there's your forest moss peeled paint and tattered rose as your first combination and then let's go to the next combination and that's going to be something completely different quite bright we're going to use forest moss again we're going to go into crushed olive which is a kind of a bit of a similar color to the peeled paint that we just saw then fossilized amber and then into stormy sky i might actually mix these i might actually go stormy sky into fossilized amber remembering our rainbow and the order that we do the colors in if you're not sure on that look back um, at some of the previous videos where i talk about color theory and how i choose which of my colors i'm going to use against which ones so which ones are going to combo with which ones and be next to each other so let's start i'm going to do forest moss last this time because it's kind of going to be the darkest color on the end that's going to act as the shadow at the end we've seen this uh, with for example black soot um, and we'll probably see it again with ground espresso when we get to those color that color but black soot you can go and watch already that's on the playlist now so there's the lovely fossilized amber went on beautifully 
Then Stormy Skies, another really juicy pad of mine. Just love, love, love how solid that colour goes on. And it's kind of dusky. I'm going to just join the fossilised amber into the Stormy Sky. It takes a little bit of work because they are two very different colours. Trying not to contaminate either of the strips of colour too much. There we go. Just a little bit more of the solid stormy sky there. There we go. Okay. And if you do feel like your brushes are starting to pick up the opposite colour, you can give them a wipe on uh, just on a piece of clean tissue. We'll do the same with this one and make sure that's just blue there. Okay. Now again, wipe my mat. So the clear blending mats that I'm using, as I said at the beginning, are all linked down below in the description. All the oxides are. There's a direct link to the particular oxide we're looking at in each video also. Um, and things like the blending brushes too. They're all there for you to go and find because these are really, really good bl blending brushes. And although I talk about uh, alternative techniques, these are definitely my go-to for applying oxides. Then I'm going to go into the greens and I'm going to go in with crushed olive. So let's just reinstate that stormy sky. Don't want to lose the blue at all. There we go. Again, I'm going to come back to my kitchen towel, make sure there's no yellow or green on there and ensure I've got the blue. And then lastly, let's go into the forest moss. And as I said, this is going to be a shadow on the end. So it's um, because it's such a dark color, I don't want it to be too striking. I just want it to be a little bit of a hint at the end just to darken up that crushed olive. Let's just mix that border line there. Now I don't apply heavy pressure when I'm mixing the lines together. Very light, I just let the brush sit on the surface and work around in small circles and it will just blend in beautifully. Now you can see where I've just had my finger in the wet ink there. So there we go. So there's another co color combination and that uh, forest moss at the bottom really is just the hint, just the dark starting to lead up. It kind of looks like sunrise or sunset in a countryside scene, just seeing it a bit blurred from a distance, that kind of thing. So. These are the two colour combinations that we have got for the beautiful forest moss there. Lovely, lovely colour. We've also, of course, mixed or taken a look at some other greens in the range also. Uh, so hopefully this has helped some of you. Uh, two very different colour combinations, but you can see how the kind of the brown tones of the green bring it all down to quite a natural colourway for each one. I can imagine even if you were to put this with things like purples, bright reds, pinks, I think that would still kind of dull down the uh, colour combination a little bit, muting it down and making it a bit more vintage. So there's a forest moss for you. Um, if you like this video, you found it useful, please do leave me a comment. A thumbs up would be great. And if you could hit the subscribe button as well, that would be really helpful for me. Do check back, back the playlist because I am uploading these videos every few days for you, uh, working through all of the Distress Oxide colours in alphabetical order. So uh, we're soon getting on to the Gs because forest moss is one of the last Fs. So uh, I'll see you again very soon for another video. Take care.